after this, now we move to portfolio risk. Very important in portfolio management. Very, very important. In portfolio risk, you also need to understand that we have one asset portfolio and two assets portfolio. What is risk? Risk is the chance of a loss. Risk is a negative occurrence. It's not something good. It's the possibility that something will go wrong. So if you are saying that your return is going to be 9.43%, there is a risk attached to that claim. Something might go wrong. So you need to measure risk even as you measure return. So the portfolio risk for a one asset portfolio, okay, is measured by standard deviation or is measured by variance. Your risk is measured by standard deviation or is measured by variance. And this is what you used to denote it. What is the name of this? Is this gamma or sigma? This is a Greek. Let me know if you know what it is in the comment section. But it's a Greek alphabet, right? So, standard deviation for a one asset portfolio is square root hmm, summation x minus x bar. Remember that formula? You can see why you need the um, knowledge of portfolio return to understand portfolio risk divided by n. The difference between standard deviation and variance is when you take off this. Um, square roots okay now standard deviation is a relative measure it's relative and it says that you can compare it once you have your answer in standard deviation you put percentage beside it but when it's invariance you can't put percentage so it's an absolute measure you can't compare it to anything but also when something comes as 15 percent you definitely know that 100 percent is the cap so you, you can measure that okay if it's 15 percent it's not really risky okay compared to 100 percent but when something comes at 225 how will you know what to measure it with, right? How will you know the relative measure? Does it make sense? So this is the formula, Sha, with all my stories. This is the formula for calculating your standard deviation. This is when they give you historical information. No? But what if they give you futuristic? What if there's probability? Whenever there's probability, your standard deviation will still be square root summation probable return. Hmm? X minus X bar square. Yeah, there's square here. There's square. You can never forget that square. Let me explain this formula. Right, this x minus x bar is deviation from mean. It is called deviation from the mean. You are deviating from the mean. You know this x bar is the mean, like I said in returns. So if you have said that we are going to make nine percent as our return, we still need to calculate the deviation. Remember that they gave you ten percent, five percent, six percent, this and that, right? Then you got the average, which is bar x. So what is the difference between that? 9% and maybe the 10% by x you got. What's the difference between that 5% and the five um the 10% by x you got the mean? The difference between 12% and that 10% you got. That's what they call deviation. Alpha. Is it deviation? A be variance. Alpha is it from the mean. Okay. Then you square it and you multiply by the probability. When there's no probability, there will be historical. Do you understand? Um we divide by n. There's no probability here. So always have it at the back of your mind. Very, very simple. Now, this risk that we've been talking about is an unsystematic risk. Very important information. It's an unsystematic risk. An unsystematic risk is a risk that can be diversified. It can be managed. It can be eliminated or it can be reduced. Do you understand? Compared to the systematic risk, which cannot be eliminated. Right? The systematic risk is like all these um, interest rates, inflation rate. Basically, what happens in the economy is in the system. So, the two assets portfolio... I just digressed. Let's talk about calculating the unsystematic risk of the two asset portfolio. Hmm? Represented by this, you also have two approaches here. Just like in this place, you have the standard deviation approach or the variance approach. You also have two approach here. You have the covariance approach or the coefficient of correlation. We'll continue in the next class. Then we started the two asset portfolio risk. Now, the portfolio risk with the two asset portfolio can be calculated from two approaches. We have the covariance approach and we also have the correlation coefficient approach. Okay. Before I give you the formula, let me talk about covariance and correlation coefficient. Covariance has to do with the joint association between the assets. Don't forget that this is a two asset portfolio. Okay. So let's say in an investor's basket, you have asset a asset b asset c asset d asset e and asset f now are they jointly associated as an investor if you invest in dangote umbrella dangote raincoat dangote um dangote winter jacket dangote winter boots 
they are jointly associated because in the rainy season the business will be booming and in the dry season the business will not boom so they are jointly associated that's the covariance now the correlation coefficient measures the extent of that relationship so they both measure relationship the relationship among those assets in your portfolio don't forget that we're talking about two assets portfolio that is multiple assets in that portfolio okay so to calculate your risk from the covariance approach this is the formula risk of the portfolio let me demarcate here risk of the portfolio is equal to square root weight a that is the weight of the first asset risk a square plus weight b risk b square can you see that let me know if you like this my table and notes that you know you want me to be filming on the board okay plus two weight a weight b times this dot i'm putting here miss times covariance a b that is the covariance between a and b the relationship between a and b that makes sense this is the covariance approach i'll tell you how to now calculate this covariance okay but let's go to the correlation coefficient approach approach to getting your risk it's very simple by the time we solve questions to make more sense to you now this approach is saying the weight of a risk of a square plus weight of b risk of b square plus two weight of a weight of b risk of a risk of b multiply by correlation coefficients between a and b so this big p is what i'm using to re represent correlation coefficients which most lecturers will do in class right so you'll now be asking yourself they'll give us weight of a risk you already know how to calculate even if they don't give you weight i've told you how to calculate weight i've told you how to calculate risk but this covariance and this correlation coefficient how do you calculate it so the formula for covariance between two assets is covariance between a and b okay equals summation of x a minus x a bar x b minus x b bar okay over n this is an historic information if it is a probability information you know what to do you already know this thing if you know that this is your first class of portfolio please go to the previous class okay go and watch the previous classes first that's why people don't need to understand portfolio theory because you start the class in the middle or you join the class late if you follow the class from the beginning you will definitely understand so how do you get your correlation coefficients if you are using correlation coefficient approach now the approach to use will be dependent on the information you are giving you know the approach to use so the correlation coefficient between a and b is calculated by saying the covariance between a and b divided by the risk of a times the risk of b very simple look at this thing if you put this particular value here that is c that is covariance a b over risk of a and risk of b risk of a and risk of b will cancel this risk of a and risk of b and you'll be left with this exact formula can you see everything is interrelated okay but this is the formula you can write it down let me try and raise it up can you see that let's now solve question on portfolio risk demonstrating one asset portfolio and two asset portfolio like this video subscribe share to anybody that you know that will find it helpful so the first question that we'll be solving says in each of the following situation, calculate expected return, variance, and standard deviation. They gave you situation A and situation B. And as you can see, situation A is historic. Because you can see they said the historic returns. They gave you 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. And situation B is a probability that is a futuristic data, right? Solution. I'll start with situation A. Calculate expected return so it means the first thing you want to calculate is expected return on that situation a hmm? the second thing is going to be variance and the third thing is what standard deviation please where's my calculator so ask yourself how do i calculate expected return obviously it is a one asset portfolio let's write it out 2016 2017 2018 2019 2020 before you write it out first of all write your formula let the formula guide you expected return is equal to summation x over n right so what is the x what are those x's five percent eight percent this is the formula that is guiding you okay this is what you're looking for okay, now check for this and then ten percent um twelve percent and fifteen percent so you get the sum of this because you're getting summation x so the sum of it to be what five plus eight plus ten plus twelve 
plus 15. And that will give us 50%. Okay? So, summation. So, bar x or x bar is equal to 50% divided by 5. And that will give us 10% as our x bar. We are done with the AI part. Now, let's calculate the variance. Remember the formula for variance? This, right? If this is standard deviation, then it means that this is variance. Because when you square your standard deviation, you get your variance. And the formula is what? Summation. X minus X bar. So, square over N. Hmm? So, now let's go and get our X minus X bar. Just put the tabular form so that it is easy. You can say 5 minus 10 plus 8 minus 10 because it's summation plus <laughs> we just put it in a tabular form it makes it very easy okay so the first x minus x bar that's x 5 right x bar minus 10 hmm? then 8 minus 10 why am i writing it out 10 minus 10 12 minus 10 and 15 minus 10 so x minus x bar 5 minus 10 that gives you minus 5 minus 2 hmm? 0 2 and 5 does it make sense? Now, x minus x bar square. You will know this thing, no? You square it, x minus x bar square. And that will give you 25. This will give you 4, 0, 4, 25. Can you see that? Then you get the summation of it. Now, when you get the summation, that will be 25 plus 4. 25 plus 4, 29. 29 plus 29. That will give you 58, right? 58. So, your variance... Is equal to 58 divided by 4. And that will give you... Sorry, 58 divided by 5. What am I doing? Divided by 5. Because it's 5 years. N is number of years. Okay. 58 divided by 5. And that will give you 11.6. Not 11.6%. 11.6. Variance is an absolute measure. So write it there. Expected return is equal to 10%. Variance is equal to... 11.6. Can you see that? Now, they're asking you for the standard deviation. Okay? So, standard deviation, which is the third part. You know that standard deviation is equal to square root of variance. So, root 11.6. Just say root answer. 3.4. Can you see that? So, you just put your answer. Standard deviation, 3.4%. This one you put percentage side because it's a relative measure. Most portfolio exam question comes as component. At least you must have done um, stock valuation in portfolio. That's getting your alpha values, knowing which stock is undervalued and overvalued. You must have done capital market line and security market line, which I'll, I'll explain. I'll see if we can cover all of that in this class. But let's just solve these questions, okay? Then the second scenario, which is the B part, which is giving you futuristic information, is asking you to also calculate expected return, okay? What is the formula? Let the formula guide you. Bar X is equal to summation of your probable return. So what are your returns? Then you get your probable return. They gave you returns, so... Those returns, call them X. Okay? Your probability, call it your P. Then you now get your probable returns. Does it make sense? Then you can now get the summation of your probable returns. Very simple. Okay? So your returns are 5%, 8%, 10%, 12%, and 15%. They gave you the corresponding probabilities. 0.05, 0 0.25, 0 0.4, 40, 0 0.25, and 0 0.05. Then the probable return, probability sized return. Um, so that's probability times your return. 5 times 0 0.05, 0 0.25 percent. 5 times 0 0.25, 1.25 percent. 10 times 0.4. 4%, that's 4.0, so I'm just putting it into this amount. 12% times 0.25, that's 3%. And 15% times 0.05, that's 0.75%. So by the time we sum everything together, 4 plus 2 plus 0.25, we're going to have 10%, okay? So it means that your expected return by X expected return is equal to 10 percent is equal to 10 percent you're not dividing by anything there's no number of years they say so you're not dividing by anything okay these are just possible outcome okay you're predicting something 
Um, the next thing is to calculate the variance. Okay, same variance formula. Recall that variance is equal to you're not putting square root here. Okay. Okay. In this case, it will be summation of probability multiplied by the variation x minus x bar square. Does it make sense? So you now be saying what is your x minus x bar square? Let's just do those ones once. This is your possible returns x. What is your x bar 10? So 5 minus 10. That is minus 5. Square is 25. Hmm? No time to waste. 25. Hmm? 8 minus 10 is minus 2. 8 minus 10 is minus 2. Square is 4. Right? 10 minus 10, 0. Square is still 0. 12 minus 10, 2. Square is still 4. 15 minus 10, 5. Square is 25%. Right? So the next thing to do is to multiply by your probability. Let the formula guide you. You are following the formula. Probability into this difference square. Probability times this. This times this. Okay. So let's do that. 0 0.05 times 25. 1.25%. 1%. 0. 1%. 1. 1.25%. 1. And you add all this together. And that will give you 4.5, right? So it means that your variance is equal to 4.5. So you'll be writing it, okay? Expected return is equal to 10%. Variance is equal to 4.5%. Sorry, not 4.5% to 4.5. Don't put percentage beside your variance. Then your standard deviation is root of your variance, okay? Square root of answer. That will give us 2.12. Can you see? So just a 2.1%. Um, so that's how to calculate your risk under your one asset portfolio. So under two asset portfolio, let me pick a question. Under the two asset portfolio. Okay, so you have this question on the screen. Security F has an expected return of 12%. You can be writing your, your variables down as you are reading it, okay? Security F has an expected return of 12%. You already know that expected return is by X because you know it's calculation. So be one step ahead. And then they said the standard deviation, just putting it, is 9% per year. Now they're telling you about security G. This is telling that it is two asset portfolio. Security G has an expected return of 18% and the standard deviation of 25% per year. 25%. Now they said required. What is the expected return on a portfolio composed of 30% of security F and 70% of security G? So you're telling me that this portfolio now, hmm, see it as a basket, contains F and G. They said F is what? 30%. G is even heavy. 70%. Okay, so F is 30% and G is 70%. Do you know what they just gave you? They just gave you the weight. So they're asking you, what is the expected return? I thought we were calculating risk. But this question is, first of all, asking the expected return. Okay. Then in the B part, they said, what will be the portfolio risk? If the correlation coefficient between the two stocks is 1, the correlation coefficient between the two stocks is 0, the correlation coefficient between the two stocks is minus 1. Can you see that? So they didn't ask you to calculate your correlation coefficient. I need to look for a question where they ask you to calculate your correlation coefficient but let's solve this one first and remember that portfolio return is equal to the weight of a multiplied by the return of a plus the weight of b multiplied by the return of b in this case it is f and g f f g g okay so i mean it doesn't matter it doesn't matter anyhow you like the important thing is that you know what you're doing right so um very simple what is the weight of F? They give it to you as 30% multiplied by 12% plus go for G. The weight is 70% multiplied by the return, which is 18%. So let's solve that. That will give us 3.6% plus 12.6%. So the portfolio return is what? 16.2%. The B part says calculate the portfolio risk. What is the formula for calculating portfolio risk? 
So remember that the risk of a portfolio is equal to root hmm, the weight of F variance of F plus the weight of G variance of G. Just come down and write it. Though. You don't have to be too fast. Okay. Plus two weight F weight G risk F risk G multiplied by correlation coefficient between f and g very simple if the correlation coefficient is equal to one so you put one here that's the only difference and in the second situation they said if the correlation coefficient between f and g is equal to zero that is they are not correlated at all and correlation coefficient i did not mention no oh, correlation coefficient ranges from plus one to minus one okay while covariance ranges from positive to negative if f is going in this direction, g is going in this direction. Here, they said it is zero. If f is going in this direction, probably g just remains. It doesn't go anywhere. Then the third scenario, they said that the relationship between them, if it is minus one, they're telling you to calculate the risk. I'm sure the risk could be the highest at this point. Because if they are going at the same direction, it's very risky. Very, very risky. That's what it means. So beyond the all numbers, understand it. So when you even get the particular answer, you kind of know if you're right or wrong. So in the first scenario... The risk of your portfolio, we are solving this first scenario, is what? What is your weight of F? They already gave it to you as 30%. That's 0 0.3. The second scenario, let's quickly write it. So let's solve. You open the brackets first. You open the brackets first. You can be writing them gradually like that. Okay, so that's 0.3 squared. Oh, I didn't write squared here. Put squared, please, in the formula. The weight as squared. The weight as squared. Okay, the weight squared. Risk squared. Weight squared. Risk squared. Sorry, let me see. Did I write it in the previous formula? I've already said the rubbish. So. This has been forming bad. I'm so sorry. Oh, look at it. Please, in that formula, put your squared. What was I thinking? Wait, squared. Um, Put your squared, please. Oh, there's squared there, please. Put your squared, okay put your squared okay it's at the point of solving now that i now realize that <laughs> this thing has squared but yeah it's a, it has squared yeah so um that is it you have um 0.3 squared multiplied by 9 squared can you see that it gives you 7.29 percent now you might even be thinking that why did i not put this one in 0.09 you want to retain one percentage, okay? Because you want to get your answer in percentage. So don't always dissolve these weights, okay? Just put it in point something. You understand my point? So here now you have 7.29 percent, right? Your root is still there. Plus you dissolve this one. You dissolve this one. You can see you're adding. You're adding. You're adding. But you need to first dissolve, 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 and add. Right? Remember in board mass, let board mass always guide you. You would always um, multiply. You open brackets, okay, before you add. Do you understand? Um, so you have three hundred and six point two five percent. You have ninety four point five percent. Okay, you have four hundred and eight point four, four hundred and eight point zero four, four oh eight point zero four percent. By the time you find the square root, that is root, root answer, twenty point two percent. Can you see? 20.2 percent so that is the portfolio risk ah if your portfolio risk is 20.2 percent is it not even better just invest in f and g because i tell you that the risk on g alone is 25 percent so by investing in f along it kind of reduces your risk balances the risk to 20.2 percent and that's even because they are positively correlated can you remember this one here <laughs> so if you do this let me just solve it, not to waste our time, okay? You're going to have 17.7%, right? Can you see that the risk has reduced here from this? Because at this point, the relationship is zero. When F is moving like this, maybe G is just standing on its own. <laughs> now, let me do this part. Here, you have your answer to be 14.8% as your portfolio risk. Can you see that it is further reduced? Because there's a completely negative relationship eh, between them. They are both moving in different directions. So you can see that the risk is at the lowest. So basically what it is telling you is that if you want to diversify your risk, you don't want to have too much risk, 
a negative correlation is better so that's the end of the question that's the end of the question okay let's enter into another subtopic maybe we'll now continue the next class in case this class is already too long i'll just cut the classes but our next subtopic on that portfolio theory portfolio stock valuation okay stock valuation so here you're trying to know undervalued and overvalued stock you're calculating the alpha values that's what it's called but before this one safe we need to understand um we need to understand systematic risk i mentioned it because we've already done on systematic risk so in portfolio or in sfm normally your risk okay can be systematic and unsystematic unsystematic risk that's your standard deviation is what we've been calculating since now your systematic risk is denoted as beta uh -huh. ah we need to solve this your systematic risk is denoted as beta so before we get into all these um, undervalued stock and overvalued stock we need to understand your systematic risk first okay systematic risk is denoted as beta this is the risk in the market this one is the risk in the business it's on systematic risk you can diversify it it doesn't have to do with the system the economy system after this portfolio stock valuation let me just say that we are going to do our capital market line and security market line and that will be all then we solve one i can question we we'll solve one i can question that's a big question usually section b question that now puts together everything that we've learned so far in portfolio because that is how to now know when you've known the portfolio theory right bye see you in the next class